Well, I'm here with Andrew Rundle. Andrew is the um, COO, or one of the two COOs of uh, Magawa. That's right. Good to chat. Yeah, no, thanks for your time. So, how long have we been working together? Um, we've been working together about a year now, I'd say. We're mm. coming up, uh, we've just fin finished our implementation, um, the, the uh, six month implementation. But previous to that, we've been speaking to you for about uh, five or six months before that as well. Yeah, so you started off with back when we were uh, d delivering in the form of projects, and you've converted from being a project engagement to being a uh, to, to, from being a project client to being an engagement client. Yeah, exactly right. So with an ongoing relationship. That's right. So I, I want to come back to that, and I'll ask you why would you do a crazy thing like that? I'm sure people are curious. But before we do that, um, for those people who've just started watching this and are mm. curious, does it make sense to continue? Um, could we could we just give those people watching a summary of some of the good news? What have we achieved in the last six months that, that's notable? Okay. Well, I think the, the biggest achievement so far has certainly been in the restructure of our sales force. Um, we had uh, 12 external salespeople, and we've reduced that back to, a uh, on my side of the business, three, and a full internal team. So that's been the most notable change, which we've uh, had a cost reduction there from that perspective, but it's also helped us engage our market in a slightly different way, which we believe that the way the market's trending is going to give us a lot more leverage in the market as well. So, so it's just to cover off on the, the basics, the fundamentals, the the sales team came, the field team came down from 12 to about five. Yeah, 12 to five um, on the external side, and uh, we've rejigged and sort of restructured the internal team, and we've got a couple of extra bodies in there. So we've 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 made estimating a specialty, and you now have two dedicated estimate es estimators. We have um, we have uh, 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 moved sales essentially inside and built an inside sales team called account managers. Yeah, I think with your division of labour approach, we've specialised things across the board. So mm. where previously we had internal people that would do a multitude of tasks from customer service to estimating to sales roles, a, a whole range of things, um, <clears throat> we've now broken that down. So we've got a specific customer service function, specific estimating mm. functions, and then specific uh, account management or internal sales functions, plus the external uh, resource as well. So that's given us a lot more focus in the particular role, so we're getting better um, efficiency and effectiveness out of people. So let me come to that. Just before, sure. just to cover off on the costs, we've reduced costs significantly because there's there's a lower headcount. Yes. But payroll costs have come down, obviously, because the team that you have now is skewed towards office-based team members rather than fuel-based team members. Yeah, that's exactly right. So N Now, of course, when people hear that, their first objection is, oh, well, what about activity levels? Mm. So what about activity levels? Well, what we've actually done is the um, we've got a reduced external um, field team base now but uh, the 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 size of the new team is still doing the same activity level of what the previous team was so um, and more in some cases in sometimes in some cases more so from an external perspective face-to-face -face visits haven't changed that's uh, that stayed the same which is which is good news um, but on the internal side uh, we're probably hitting three to four times more contact points with customers at this point in time so a fraction of the field team the same volume of face-to-face -face appointments in the field uh, and an inside team doing a high volume of, 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 of phone contacts, many of which simply weren't being performed previously. Mm. I would say there was a small element of them yeah. uh, performed previously. Because the field, the field the, people were doing The field some. people would have mm. still been um, doing phone calls and mm. email contact points. But uh, no, we've certainly increased that side of the activity level. And we've actually uh, also increased the amount of interface with our customers. So in, where we only had one point of contact, now we've got two or three. Okay. And certainly we, what we can say is none of the fears, the common fears that were raised, you know, are, are customers going to get upset if they're talking to someone in Melbourne as opposed to in Sydney? Uh, are people going to get upset if uh, and a salesperson's assistant is booking an appointment? None of those issues turned out to, to, to be issues. No, no. Um, everything, we've actually had some very positive feedback in relation to some of those things where people have found their service levels have increased because when they were dealing with an external person and they were hard to get hold of because they're in a range of meetings or dashing around or on the phone a lot, um, they had another point of contact so they could get answers uh, a lot more rapidly. Um, we had a couple of small experiences where our customers said they wanted to deal with one particular person, but the model was flexible enough for us to keep that in their best interest, yeah. but use the other components of the model to still deliver better service to them. Yeah. So, so if they want to talk to the same person, they can talk to the same person. Yeah, that's fine. But we're confident that in, co in due course, they'll figure out for themselves that yeah. there's a better way to interact. Exactly right, yeah. Okay, so 
uh, let's go back to the beginning. What does Magawa do for a living? Okay, we're a design and manufacturing organization. Uh, we specialize in the production of polypropylene, which is a type of plastic, which is extruded into a, a sheet form. And then we uh, do a lot of downstream processing to convert it into a whole range of fantastic items, um, probably point of sale, stationary and packaging type items. But then there's a lot of specialty type um, products that we manufacture as well. Excellent. Excellent. So, how did what's the backstory? How did you how did Magawa discover us in the first place, and how do we get to the point where we're at now? Well, um, I've uh, I've been with Magawa for about ten years, and I uh, was on the uh, sheet side of the business, but recently, well, within the last three years, moved over to the packaging side of the business and took over a fairly large sales team. And uh, at that point in time, there wasn't a, a, the best structure around in terms of sales management, and uh, we weren't operating as effectively as what we could. So. Um, after about 12 months into the role, we started, or I started looking at uh, other options of different sales management techniques, but ways we can optimize a business in a really, I suppose, very evolutionary type um, market. It was just changing very, very rapidly. So. Uh, in some conversations with some people here, we uh, stumbled across your Lunch and Learn, and I came to one of your conferences and, and met yourself. Uh, you threw out a few ideas, which I found really, really interesting, and then we engaged you after that and had a few well, conversations. Well, it, it wasn't that quick, because I remember coming back every quarter and doing one of these Lunch and Learns in Melbourne, yes, and probably even in Sydney, and every time I did one, there was a contingent from Magara. Yeah. And, and considering I was doing them quarterly, that probably happened four or five times, so you, you guys were probably attending our events for about a year. Yeah, I think we sent a sample of our own personal population to yes. uh, to one of your quarterly lunch and learns. And uh, we had to go through a process where there was, I wouldn't say convincing, but um, engagement in different parts of the organization. Then we came together internally after having you out here for a two-day workshop, discussed the possibilities and made a decision that we think it was the uh, the right, right way to go in terms of trying to align ourselves with the market and produce a... a, a a higher um, performance mm. uh, sales model. One thing you guys did that was extraordinary was that whole engagement thing because I, I guess if I was tracking the opportunity lead time, I would have said, gosh, these guys take forever to make it soon. Sure. But, but when you guys committed, I think of, of all of the engagements we've worked on, you guys will be in the top three in terms of commitment. Yeah, you, okay. you, you know, you, you took a long time to make a decision, but when you made a decision, mm. it was absolute. There was no question. Probably. And it made it so much easier for us to work, uh, to, you know, to work with you on that ju the journey. Because sure. it, we've done a lot of difficult stuff. Mm. Okay. Well, from our perspective, it's a big decision to make, mm. um, especially, I mean, that the uh, the business has been operating since the late 60s. Mm. And since we've had dedicated sales teams, the model has been pretty much the same the whole way through. So mm. it was a significant change in terms of turning the model on its head, mm. essentially, having the internal sales force as a sales front line, um, the division of labor approach where we uh, chunk everything down to specific type functions for different roles. Uh, so it was a, uh, a heavily researched change and we wanted to make sure we made the right one because there are lot, lots of options on the market and different ways to do things. Mm. And people like myself continually have people pitching their way and mm. different consultants coming to see you. So um, you can be bamboozled by a lot of information. So we really had to just sit down, decipher through all the information, make sure we made a correct decision. And so. in spite of all the research that you did and in spite of all the planning that we did, we did a two-day solution design workshop, I think. That's correct, yes. And then even after that, we re revisited in special workshops some of the conclusions. And, and, I, and I think there, there were, were a number of things, probably three or four major changes, well, maybe mm. not major, but three or four changes to the model. We didn't start off with estimating mm. as a specialty, no. but we quickly realized that it was a bigger beast than we anticipated, so mm. we had to build a dedicated estimating team. Sure. The model um, looks different to the way that uh, we first approached it, you know, yeah. tw 12 odd months ago. Um, the uh, the thing I'm comfortable with, though, is the model was flexible, so it's still scalable. Uh, we believe it's still going to deliver results, but we were able to optimize it to suit our business or our market um, more so than the, the generic one that was presented at that point in time. Um, so it's uh, it seems to be working well. I think by taking out some of the chunks and sort of having it estimating on its own now has given us a lot more leverage to uh, have very fast turnaround of estimates. We're having less mistakes because we've picked the best people from mm. our team who are dedicated to that particular function. So I think all around that's been a real uh, bonus for us. Yeah, there's a lesson for everyone. Pick your best people and put them in the estimating team. Exactly right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, 
let's talk about the future. Sure. There's, there's. Uh, I mean, it, obviously, it's exciting that you've reduced cost. We, you closed two offices too. That we. That's right. Yeah, we've mm. closed one office so far. We're in the process of closing the second one down. So mm. our field-based sales team will be working from a home office environment, um, and that's going to give them a lot of flexibility as well. And once again, reducing costs uh, that were unnecessary. And there's no excuse for them not to be face to face with customers. No, exactly right. Exactly. No right. office to go to. No, no office to go to. So, um, and obviously, there's been other associated. Uh, challenge there of making sure we've got the right technology in place, mm. but we certainly seem to be getting that sorted out as well, which was um, a very big leap for us because the in the previous model, the technology that we were using wasn't uh, working in our favour, mm. but this model has really driven to um, develop the best uh, technology in situations. Actually, before we talk about the future, can you yes, touch sure. on what, what it's like now managing sales mm. as opposed to what it was like managing sales previously, the okay. manager's perspective? Sure. Um, in the old model, we, we did have systems which we operated by and uh, I suppose there were a lot of the, the usual sort of sales systems out there with funnels and charts and those sorts of things. Um, but it wasn't uh, as tr transparent as you'd like it to be. And one of the reasons it wasn't transpar transparent because there maybe wasn't a dis the discipline to use it, but also um, you couldn't always uh, validate if the data was accurate. Uh, mm. The MIS that... And you um, didn't track activity. And we didn't track activity other mm. than face-to-face -face sales calls, mm. uh, but we didn't track phone calls, emails, or any other type mm. of customer contact. Um, the MIS we're using now is... Uh, the visibility is unbelievable. So from a manager's perspective, I can see everything in a very um, unthreatening way when you're working with your mm. sales team and they're very much engaged in the process as well. So that's been the real benefit. They feel like they've got ownership over the data because I am reviewing that data with them on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, it's pretty quick and easy to use. So, I mean, as we first started off uh, six months ago, it would take me about 45 minutes to go through a, uh, a sort of a management review session on a daily basis, but we've actually chunked that down to about 15 minutes now. So it's short and sharp. Um, anything that is scary really just jumps out off the uh, out of the data pages so it's very very easy for me to um, mm. look analyze um, create actions and uh, and go from there so okay mm. so costs are down activity levels are healthy we now need to kick that it's revenue got, line exactly in the, right. in the yeah. upwards direction yeah, we've got to convert to revenue now do we know how to do it um, yeah I think we've got a very good plan in place I think um, we've had ongoing sessions and mm. obviously uh, today we're doing another strategic mm. two day workshop uh, which is beneficial which is, engages a lot of people but it also really uncovers where the gaps are lying and we've certainly identified some gaps um, so now that the gaps are identified it's just about doing the hard work and putting the plans in place and we're coming up with some pretty good solutions so I think mm. with what we've identified it's uh, a matter of Head down, backside up. So there's th there's really three pieces to the solution, but none of the three pieces require adding other people. Uh, d do any of the three components of the solution to kick activity levels up even higher? Do any of them are any of them unachievable? Uh, I don't believe so. No, no nothing looks too um, overly challenging at this stage, other than mm. just the effort for the people that are contributing to the model right yeah. now. Um, hopefully, we'll get it to a, a point where the activity level increases so much that we do have to rec recruit other yeah. people and, and keep it scaling upwards. Um, but at this point in time, the resource levels will be okay to try to get the results we need. Well, that's that's excellent. You've done a great job. Yeah, no, thanks, uh, thanks very much for your help. And uh, obviously the whole ballistics team has been absolutely fantastic and very supportive, uh, certainly in my role, who's leading one of the divisions and has a sales management and also mm. a, uh, can slip into other functions from time to time. Mm. But um, now we're just looking forward to seeing that revenue line go through the roof. Terrific. No worries. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, mate. Ta.